Hi guys, my name is Josie Din. I'm a social worker. But today's video, we're not going to talk anything about social work. Today, we're going to talk about Taoism and Lao Tzu's philosophy. The reason that I want to make this video is because recently I found more and more my friends start to get interested in Taoism and some ancient Eastern philosophy. But for someone who's not coming from China or doesn't have any Chinese cultural background, it is very hard for them to understand some basic and fundamental concept in the Taoism and in the Lao Tzu philosophy. And that is the start point for me to think about how to build a communication bridge between these two cultures. But to be honest, even nowadays for Chinese people, it is very, very hard for us to understand the thorough perspective from Lao Tzu because Lao Tzu is too profound and so many information that we can get from it. And since Taoism is one of my favorite philosophy, and now I just want to incorporate with a lot of other Chinese great philosophers idea and in this video and just do some introduction, like basic introduction for Taoism and Lao Tzu's philosophy instead of I want to make a conclusion about anything. So let's enjoy. So first of all, what is Dao De Jing? Dao De Jing is a book which only contains around 5,200 Chinese letters. It seems like very easy to read and understand, but it is also been regarded as the most difficult and the deepest philosophy in Chinese history. Until nowadays, a lot of Chinese scholars as well as other scholars from the whole world is trying to understand or get an in-depth insight into this book. But today I want to introduce you guys about the Professor Zheng Shiqiang's framework and his perspective because his perspective is more like a wide lens angle. So while you understand some basic fundamental knowledge or a concept about the Taoist concept about the Chinese Asian philosophy, it is very easy for us to have our own perspective to understand what is Lao Tzu's philosophy and what is Tao De Jing and what you can get from it. So before we're going to talk about Lao Tzu's philosophy and Tao De Jing, there's some basic fundamental concept for us to understand, which is very important. In our history, there are so many perspectives or angles trying to get into what is Tao De Jing. And actually there is no right or wrong perspectives or there is no better or worse perspectives. The perspectives just perspectives. There's no judgmental because the Tao De Jing or Lao Tzu's philosophy or even Yi Jing is so big and everyone can always get what you want from it. So there is a saying, it is called All roads lead to Tao De Jing. So the original Tao De Jing's name was referenced as Lao Tzu, which is actually the name of the author. But the reason that it is being called Lao Tzu during the day is because it is not being widely commonly acknowledged. So we can know a lot of Chinese ancient philosophy or books were called blah 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 Tzu. For example, Han Fei Tzu, Zhuang Tzu, Meng Tzu, and etc. The reason that it's been called as the name of the author is because they are not being widely acknowledged or being accepted by the publics or by the common sense. The why it changed, why it is not Lao Tzu anymore, why it is being called Dao De Jing now. Dao De Jing was first implied by the Emperor Jing of Han because the emperor during the day was very benefit from the Tao De Jing and he thought everyone should follow this. Everyone should do what it says in Tao De Jing. Everyone should follow with Lao Tzu's philosophy. So they want to enhance the level of consciousness. Jing in Chinese means scripture, which means you can't change it randomly. You can't change the word from it. You can't just add or delete any information from it. It is pretty much like the constitution during the day. So since then, Tao De Jing become very influential for Chinese people and has a very important part in Chinese culture. And later on, roughly 800 years later, the Emperor Xuanzong of Tang then being regarded as Tao De Zhen Jing, which he actually enhanced the level of consciousness again of the Tao De Jing. Zhen Jing means the honorific sutra, which means the perfect scripture and the way of the truth. So we're talking about truth here. So what is truth? What is not the truth? Why we call Tao De Jing is the way to the truth. So nowadays, no matter where we are, we have the basic concept about what is truth or what is the opposite of the truth. We always regard that the opposite of the truth is the falsified. So we have the truth and the falsified and it's the opposite concept. However, in Lao Tzu's concept or in Lao Tzu's philosophy and in Tao De Jing, they're not 
work like that. Lao Zi is the person who wanted to break up this black and white, this binary opposition thought for us thousands of years ago. It is not to say that binary opposition theory is wrong. For Lao Zi, it is just not necessary. It is not to say that binary opposition theory is wrong, is good, is moral or immoral. For Lao Zi, it is just unnecessary. So nowadays, if we think or if we regard a thing is not true, then it gotta be false. And vice versa, if we think about a thing is false, is wrong, then it gotta be true. But what Lao Zi is going to say that? This kind of a binary opposition concept is going to confuse us and even going to cause some anxious or depression in our daily life. This is the perspective from Lao Zi. Because from Lao Zi or from Taoist, this is not the way that the world works. The concept of this is very important for us to understand Dao De Jing. If we cannot get this concept or fully understand this concept from Lao Zi, it's very hard for us or unlikely for us to understand what Dao De Jing or I Ching really says. Because in the real world, according to Lao Zi, the world is not pure black or pure white. The world can be both black, both white, or both not black and both not white, which means the world can be both true and false, both not true and not false. I know it's a bit confusing right now, so I'm going to give you an example and illustrate how it can work in that way. If you walk in a Chinese antique store, you really like a jadeware jewelry and you want to know whether this is an authentic one, whether this is a true one. So you're going to ask the owner, Hello, is this a real jade jewelry? Is this the real one, the authentic? Oh my god, this is so good. Is this a real one? Oh my god, I like it so much. And the owner is going to answer like, mm. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know, I, uh, but it's not a fake one. Yeah. So why the owner is going to answer it is not a fake one instead of just tell you the thing that is an authentic one or it is a true one. Because he can't say that. Because for the jade wear that you really like is a real jade wear. It is made by jade. That's true. But... The owner doesn't know whether this is the one that has been used by someone thousands of years ago. So he cannot deny the fact that this is a real jade wear. But he cannot also say to you that this is the jade wear that has been used thousands of years ago. So in this case, you can see this jade wear is both true, both false, or it is not true and not false. So actually these two concepts emerged together in this case. So that is the reason why Lao Zi said it is unnecessary for us to regard the things from pure black and white concept. The binary opposition theory is actually unnecessary for us to imply it in our real life because the world is not working that way. In most of the case, a lot of the things can be both true and false or both not true and not false. So if you're familiar with Yi Jing, you know there is a very small part, very small part in our universe is the absolute truth. And another very small part in our universe is the absolutely false. So what's in between them? What's in between them? From Lao Tzu, what's in between them is called the real or the fact. And to understand what is the real or what is the fact is also very important in Lao Tzu's philosophy or in Tao De Jing or in any Taoist philosophy because that's how they understand the world, the real and the fact. So in China, you can see a lot of Chinese people say 我跟你说实话 this shi means the real or the fact. So Chinese people are not going to tell you 我跟你说真话 Zhen means true. So Chinese people normally they're just telling you like let's be real, let's talk about the fact instead of I'm going to tell you the truth. 
because we know that we can't tell the truth. The only thing that we can tell in our life or from our perspective, from our concept is only the real or the fact that we received from this world. You know the thing is not true once you label it, once you sing it, once you name it. Because you can't see the thing from the whole perspective, even a simple thing. You can see a chair is a chair, yes, because you name it as a chair. But how the other things could see it? Can you see the particles? Can you see the atoms that constitute the chair? Can you see the other side of the color from the chair? So we need to know that our concept, our human concept, is actually very, very limited. Even the color that we saw is not the same thing. Someone can see a wider spectrum in the colors, and someone just a little bit smaller. Even the color we see the different, we smell different smellings, and we have the different sense of the taste in our tongues as well. So we test the things in different. So how could you say that it is true? We can't. That's how Lao Tzu get it. We can't tell what is true. If we can't tell what is true, then we can't tell what is false. So the only thing that we know is just the fact. It's just a real thing. It is just a fact that we experienced in our personal daily experiences. That's why the first chapter of Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu is talking about what is the absolute Tao. The Tao can be told of is not the absolute Tao. The names can be named and are not the absolute names. That's why Lao Tzu is going to see this very important concept in the first chapter of Tao Te Ching. Okay, this is this episode and we're going to further discussion about some other concept, other important concept in the next episode and talking about Lao Tzu and his preach as well. So stay tuned!